Hello, this is Nancy Kuntz. I'm a child neurologist and a neuromuscular specialist at Lurie Children's Hospital in Chicago, Illinois. And I'm here today with my colleague, Natalie Gedeker, a nurse practitioner from Washington University in St. Louis. Hi, Natalie. Hi, Dr. Kuntz. Nice to see you. Excited to be here with you. Great. We have a um, the opportunity to talk for just a few moments about the first clinical presentation and the first suspicion of uh, problems in boys with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. I'd love to have you share your experience about what that looks like. Yeah, absolutely. So often um, you know, parents are the first ones who are pointing out, noticing um, things that, that may be abnormal with their young boys. And sometimes things are noticed at school as well, prior to um, perhaps the pediatrician pointing something out. Um, and that's because these boys might have early um, on-time gross motor development. Um, sometimes they can be a little delayed or they're just sort of on the, the later end of the normal range. So they may develop independent sitting at eight or nine months, which still is on time. Um, they may walk at 16, 17 months, which technically still falls within the, the normal range. And so they may not be quite flagged at that time. Um, for that reason. Um, they may have early persistent head lag, but otherwise symptoms generally start to appear around two to three years or so. Um, parents often point out that their little boys may be walking up on their tiptoes or toe walking. Um, they may fall more frequently than other children. Um, and when they do fall, they may have difficulty getting up off the floor. So they may do this um, characteristic thing that we call the Gowers maneuver, where instead of sitting up and then standing up, they sort of, they roll to their belly and they have to push off the ground um, to, to stand back up um, or sometimes even push up off their legs to stand up as they get weaker. Um, they also can have problems with running, problems climbing stairs, um, often have enlarged calves, although rarely that's something that a parent or a pediatrician would point out, but that is, is a characteristic of this at a young age. And the other thing um, that many of them have, not all, but many will have an early speech delay, um, and some um, can have autism. And that cognitive piece, I think, can really confuse the, the etiology of their motor symptoms. So the pediatrician may presume that the, the gross motor delay is central in origin or, or due to a brain um, delay or problem instead of considering a muscle disease like Duchenne because they also have this speech piece. There was a study actually from Dr. Emma Shefaloni that was back in 2009 that shows that there's an average delay of um, 2.5 years from the onset of symptoms to a DMD diagnosis. We often see much longer than that, um, actually, especially in rural areas with less resources. And then, Dr. Kuntz, I'm wondering what your experience is. Um, kind of in terms of what you see in the average age of diagnosis for boys with DMD and what some reasons may be for a delayed diagnosis. Yes, uh, it's, it's pretty amazing that um, even within the recent years, maybe, well, Dr. Cephaloni's um, study with the MD Starnet was about 15 years ago now, but when they found that the average age of diagnosis for boys with Duchenne was four and a half, that really had not budged from a, a previous study that was done several decades before. So um, just over time, uh, even with increased awareness of Duchenne muscular dystrophy, we're not getting the boys earlier. And the stories that I hear and what I see is very similar to exactly what you've presented, where uh, sometimes the parents will have concerns and be reassured by the um well-meaning primary care providers who say, oh, it's a boy, give him, cut him some slack, give him a little bit of time. But what this means is that many times people, families, parents feel chastised and for being overly protective or worried and right. um, love the reassurance and go off only to come back, you know, months to a year later to readdress the same kind of issue. Um, I've found that it's been particularly difficult in recent years because of the quarantining around COVID. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of boys were, um, you know, at home um, doing school virtually, weren't around uh, groups of other children their age for the parents or the teachers or the therapists at school to notice uh, the stark contrast maybe between the boys mm -hmm. 
who were their age. Um, and so that was something that led to uh, a delay in diagnosis. Even more so, sometimes uh, when children are in school, um, they are more awkward, they fall, they're not as um, likely to challenge themselves with a, a climb up some stairs or playground equipment, and sometimes get bullied or teased about that. And so some of the boys, um, with or without any kind of um, social or language problems that can sometimes be seen in Duchenne, uh, withdraw a little bit and withdraw from the bullying mm -hmm. and uh, beg for homeschooling. I've had several boys who are eight or nine years of age who'd been homeschooled well past COVID quarantining. Mm -hmm. um, and it was uh, the parents realized in retrospect, again, the isolation from other children their age uh, that led them to um, uh, accept the motor delays and motor problems uh, for a much longer period of time which again allowed the disease to progress farther uh, to a point where the boys um, had um, more muscle injury to overcome once treatment began. But uh, to summarize, I would say I think it's pretty amazing that now that we have um, more direct uh, and uh, easier for the boys ways of diagnosing the disease with molecular genetic testing, it still amazes me that uh, the age at which we diagnose this um, firmly as a dystrophinopathy or Duchenne muscular dystrophy um, has not improved over time. Yep, absolutely.